Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. I uh, got a little quick project today um, that we're going to knock out. This is a little uh, thumb screw piece um, that fits onto a um, spotting scope. So my, my oldest daughter uh, is a, a competition shooter and uh, her precision air rifle team that she shoots on, they use uh, spotting scopes to look down range and see how they're doing. And uh, a couple of the spotting scopes on the, the team at the high school up there where she uh, competes at, uh, is they have these little screws on here that are used to adjust the scopes up and down. Uh, and uh, they some of these pieces have come out and have been lost. And uh, they basically have got these real nice spotting so scope stands uh, and can't use them. So I'm gonna make a couple of these. Now this uh, this knob that, uh, that came off of there is made out of aluminum. Uh, I'm going to make them out of steel. Uh, and the only reason being is I, I don't have a piece of aluminum to make them out of. Um, and steel ought to hold up a little bit better anyway. So uh, I'll zoom you guys in here and let you see this. But uh, the outside of this, you can see has the little uh, uh, ridges in it for uh, you know being able to turn it and it looks to me like uh, th this was a ex piece of extruded aluminum um, so I don't think that they actually machined these uh, ridges in here I think they just had a piece of bar stock that had all those ridges extruded in it and then they uh, uh, machined the pieces out of that so uh, because I don't really want to have to set that up on a dividing head and everything and mill those out we're just gonna knurl it uh, for what it's being used for. That will be giving plenty. In fact, they've got some other knobs on the uh, same spotting scopes that are knurled and uh, everybody said they actually like those better than this one anyway. So we're gonna knurl it. Um, and uh, again, we'll make it out of steel. So anyway, we'll get you over here and kind of let you see how we're gonna run through this project. The outside diameter of this original is one inch. Um, and this is, I'm kind of excited about that because this is gonna give me a chance to use my collet chuck. Uh, as you guys may have seen if you've been watching my videos, I got this collet chuck uh, back last fall. So I've had it for, I don't know, four or five months now. And uh, when I got it, 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 it didn't come with any collets. And this takes a 22J collet, which is kind of a oddball size. It's a real big collet for running on a big lathe such as this. Uh, but these uh, collets are kind of hard to find. Uh, I did uh, pick up a one inch uh, collet uh, recently and uh, that's what this holds is a one inch. So um, this is probably how this was originally turned uh, with that extruded piece is they probably uh, ran it in a collet uh, just like that. Uh, and machine that bar out of it. So, or mean, machine it out of a piece of bar rather. So uh, anyway, we, we're going to uh, use a piece of steel and I've got a piece of steel rod and uh, we'll just put the, you know, get used to which way this thing turns, okay? So we'll put that in there. Uh, this is just a piece of hot rolled. I wish I had a piece of cold roll for this, but I don't. I'll probably, just skim this down uh, just a little bit under an inch and then knurl that, you know, just enough to clean it up and get that scale off the outside of it. And then we'll knurl it and machine the rest of it. But uh, uh, as you can see with this collet chuck, you just uh, turn the outside and um, this collet is on a taper. And that just kind of locks it in there. And that's gonna run, you know, about as perfectly true as you can get something to run, or at least it should. Uh, so um, anyway, I'm excited to get a chance to use my my collet chuck. All right, we'll go ahead and start by uh, getting us a good face on here. Like I said, clean that up just enough to get that scale off of that uh, 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 hot roll finish. And uh, then we'll come in there and knurl it and turn it down. <laughs> So I've got my knurling tool in here now, and um, it's gonna be important to get this thing set up properly. So I don't know how much knurling some of you guys may have done, but uh, basically the way this works is, is there's two wheels in here, and uh, they're both hardened wheels, and they have the crosshatch pattern in there. So actually one wheel is turning and has the 
hatch is going in one direction, the other one has the hatches going in the other directions, and of course they come together and have that crosshatch uh, appearance of knurling. So uh, when you're doing this kind of knurling, it's important uh, that you have both of the wheels uh, lined up properly so that they're both cutting into the metal uh, at, the, at the same um, amount of pressure. And the way that you do that, or the way that I do that when I'm setting this up, is I just kind of, you know, eyeball it, get it kind of close. And I can tell right now I'm a little bit high still, so I'm going to go ahead and adjust this down on the tool post. Now I probably went too far. All right, that's, that's close for a start. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the lathe on and have it turning, and uh, I'm just going to barely feed this in. I'm going to watch those wheels, and if the top one starts uh, turning before the bottom one does, and I know that it needs to come up just a little bit, uh, or the bottom one starts turning, it needs to go down a little bit. And what we want to do is get them when they come into the, to the metal, they're both uh, engaging at the same time. So uh, let's show you what we mean. So real slowly, I'm coming in, and I can see that top one is uh, coming in a little bit quicker. So again, I need to uh, raise it up, and I'm just going to raise it up just a tiny little bit on my tool post. All right, it still needs to come up just a little bit more. making very small adjustments here. All right, so now the bottom one's hitting first. Just real close, guys. All right, they're both uh, contacting about the same time now. So uh, what we'll do is uh, go ahead and run this out. I'm going to put some pressure on that and then we'll just feed it in. my feed. I'm going to feed it in a little bit more. And we'll come back out with it. Ah. Yeah, well, you guys saw my uh, bozo moment there. Uh, so uh, when you got something spinning like that, it's probably not good to take a brush and put it down there and let it pull it out. So I like my, my new brush here. Uh, <laughs> fortunately, these uh, little acid brushes are disposable and I'll just throw that one away, obviously. Uh, but no harm was done, uh, thank goodness. So uh, we got a decent knurl and uh, we'll go ahead and, and uh, finish uh, turning this out. All right, so I need to, Turn down to here. I went ahead and, and uh, marked that off camera. Just came in here with my tip of my cutter and just uh, scribed a little witness mark in there. Uh, we're going to go ahead and turn down, uh, you know, this larger diameter in there, which is uh, about 700 thousandths. Uh, so we'll just turn that down the whole length down to that point.
about a half inch and I turned that down to a quarter of an inch. So, uh, gives me a rough mark to go off of. We're about ready to start threading this now. Um, I've got my threading tool in there and I've actually got it set as deep as I want to go. So I'm going to just put a little witness mark in there uh, to mark my depth. Uh, then I'm going to do a scratch test uh, to check my threads per inch, which would be, this is quarter 20, so it should be 20 threads per inch. And then we'll go ahead and uh, start threading this. So like I often do when I'm threading, particularly on smaller threads like this, I'll get it started on the lathe and then I'll come in here with just a little die stock and uh, finish getting it to size. It's just, uh, you know, you can definitely get these uh, threads all threaded to the right depth on the lathe, but you know, I got these dies and they're, once the threads are started, uh, it's fairly easy just to finish them up. So a lot of times this is just a little shortcut uh, to get them down to the right size. And now that should be a perfect fit. Let me grab a nut. All right, and that's just right. So now what's left is uh, we'll part this off. We've got the parting blade set in here and I'm just setting this up in here and just eyeballing that depth. It's not anything super critical. Uh, that looks good and we'll go ahead and just uh, part it off right there. Sped it up a little bit. Just uh, deburr that with the file before I uh, cut it completely off. So the one on the right, of course, is the aluminum one, and that's uh, the original, and then the, this one here is the one made out of steel that I just made. Uh, so it's got a little bit more weight to it. The knurl on it came out just fine. I, I, that's gonna give them plenty of grip to tighten that up with. Uh, so anyway, that's pretty much done. Uh, probably gonna just go ahead and make about, uh, I don't know, three or four of these, so they'll have a few extras laying around in case they need some more down the road. And uh, I'll probably make the other ones off camera. So there we go, we made 
total of three new ones. I think they only needed one, but I'll give them a couple extra spares. Uh, these uh, have a little O-ring on them, and basically what this does is it, there's a thin piece of metal that goes on there, and this O-ring just keeps it from coming off. Uh, <laughs> of course, it doesn't do a great job. That's why they keep losing them. Uh, but supposedly that keeps it from, from coming off, kind of holds it on there, and then this right here just goes into uh, something and tightens up again. So I'm really not quite sure. I don't know that I looked at it that close. But, uh, but anyway, we got those on there. Uh, I got some uh, extra O-rings, went ahead and put those on there. And uh, these are ready to go. We'll let uh, my daughter take those back to practice with her next week. And uh, they should have their spotting scopes back ready to go again. Mm -hmm.